Why, hello everybody and welcome to the Transgender Youth Channel. It is Thursday and that means it's me, Tasia, and this week's topic is transgender parents and transgender children. More specifically, transgender parents having transgender children. What is your children? opinion? What, and what would you do in that scenario? <clears throat> now, this is quite interesting for me because it is something I have thought so a lot about. So often. It is one of those things that is highly overlooked. As transgendered men and women, we have the option of adopting or storing specimens. We can have our own genetic children in the future. Um, but I mean, it's overlooked that if you adopt a child, you don't specifically know their genetic background. It could be, it could run in their family. And, you know, they... <laughs> Oh, they would be able, they might, you know, be transgender. Also, there is um, the fact that if you're having your own genetic child, <clears throat> they have your genes. You, you know, your child may not be transgender, but your grandchild could be transgender. But it is definitely something to think about. And it is definitely something that could become a lot more common in the future. Um, I think my opinion on this is um, basically what it comes down to in raising children in general. Every parent loves to do the shopping and you know set up the room and paint it like blue or pink or get all the things say it's a boy or daddy's girl or you know um, it's a girl you know mama's little boy you know, just stuff like that. People get really excited about that. And I think that's really cool. But in the same token, I don't want to have preconceived notions of my child. Because, you know, I may have, you know, had my own child. But in the same token, I still have to get to know my child. This is a brand new person. You know, they're going to form opinions and things on their own. And I, it's not right of me to assume of another person what they're going to be and how they are you can't ask that of any person so um sorry i wanted to see the time bit um so i think it's very important for me to raise my child in not only a gender neutral environment but just an overall neutral environment so meaning racially neutral religiously neutral um, politically neutral, you know, gender neutral, everything neutral. Um, just because I think if you are able to educate your child on the many things that are out there in the world without casting feminine and masculine or, you know, Christian and Hindu or, um, you know, like black and white, you know, it's, it, there's so many more options out there that, it's almost wrong of you to, I wouldn't say it's wrong of you, but it's almost creating an environment that's entirely inclusive of your child. So when they grow up and go into society, they're only going to feel like they belong to that group of people or a select group of people, because as you add all these things up, it becomes more and more niched. Um, and I, you know, I want my child to make those decisions for themselves and not have my opinion or my partner's opinion to affect their choices in life you know i think it's very important it's the job of a parent to teach them right from wrong so you know stealing is bad um having a cookie before dinner is bad you know doing well in school is good um you know cleaning your room is good um helping mommy with the dishes is always good um but you know, I think that that's the job of a parent is to teach right and wrong. And boy and girl is not right and wrong. Christian and Islamic or Jewish is not right and wrong. You know, black and white is not right and wrong. It's there. It's prevalent. And it is wrong for us to try and cast our views on our children in that way. 
because as they grow through society and grow with society, these things lose their value. Um, it is a huge thing in the world this, this day and as we go forward that there is no longer this huge emphasis on an inclusive society. You know, things are becoming more and more open to the public. Transgendered issues are more open to the public. You know, black issues are more open to the public. Middle Eastern issues are hugely open to the public. Gay and right issues, um, Christian issues. You know, there's so many issues out there that are being, um, that are more media relevant, that having an inclusive inclusiveness to a particular group doesn't do you any justice because it doesn't do you good and it doesn't do you bad but in the same token you know it's all about your own choices it comes down to is this a good person in society or is this a bad person in society um so i think raising my child in a gender not only gender but just a generally neutral environment is a good step in that direction um because, you know, my kid is going to be as mixed as hell. And if I try and force my beliefs on that child, that child is going to be so messed up in the head. It's not even funny, you know, because, you know, growing up for me, my mom's Anglo-Pagan. My dad is, you know, Catholic. So, you know, confusing. I messed up. I don't want my child to be messed up either. Just kidding. But um, I... I think that I think that that is hugely important. Now, bringing it back to transgendered issue, and not even issue, bringing it back, bringing it back to the subject of a, having a transgender child as a trans parent, um, I don't think makes it any different from being a cisgendered parent and having transgendered children. I think universally it should be the same when dealing with the subject. Um, you know, again, if I'm raising my child in a gender neutral environment, if they decide, if my little boy says, I want to be a fairy princess today, my, my little boy can be a fairy princess that day. If my little girl says, I want to play with Thomas the Tank Engine, well, then my little girl can play with Thomas the Tank Engine. It's not a huge deal. You know, as they grow up and start bo uh, building bonds with people and creating an environment outside of my home, which I have no control over, at least they'll be educated to make the choices that make them happy for themselves. But they'll know what not to do and what to do in terms of a moral, on a moral compass. You know what I mean? Um, so the one thing I will say is I do have a slight issue with the whole hormone um, hormone blockers or hormones in general um, at an early age and the only reason why I say that is because as a human being we all have the right to you know change our mind later in life and we all have the right to you know um, want certain things and I know for me it's hugely important to have children, genetic children, and I know that <clears throat> I know that if I were to, <clears throat> sorry, I know that if I were to have started this earlier, like when I was going through puberty and been on hormones, I know that I would not be able to store a specimen in order to have children in the future, and that would be something that would damage my well-being because I know I wouldn't be able to have that. You know, I'm not saying it's not okay to adopt because it totally is but for some people it is definitely prevalent for them and their well-being and their view of their life to have genetic children that's just the way it goes and I know that in my I know that in my um in my experience you know trying to make decisions too quickly can almost almost be inhibiting you know, so on the one hand, I don't want to hamper or stop their process from happening. And I don't want them to stop transitioning if that is what they choose to do. In the same token, I want to make sure that they have all of the information available to them to make the informed decision of what they will not be able to do and what they will be able to do 
if they decide to take the action that they decide to take. Um, so, you know, if my child does want to have a genetic child, I want them to know that if they start hormones, you know, you, you won't be able to have children in the future. Um, so, you know, I think the huge thing about that as well is to approach it where you're not install, installing fear into them, but merely educating them on, you know, this does affect this, you know, and this could be the outcome, but there are these options out there. You know, it's all about discussing the options. And I think, you know, as well, being as we go forward in life, there are so many more resources available that I wouldn't have to worry about my child's safety or choices because if they have a question and they don't want to come to mom because I know I didn't want to go to mom when I had a question you know there are resources out there there are transgendered centers there are transgendered doctors there are transgender therapists you know there are tons of resources out there for them to go and help them make an help them get an outsider's opinion or an outsider's view to help them make a choice that could be a great one for them you know and um, at the end of the day, a family is all about loving each other for no matter what and supporting each other no matter what. We as parents may never understand the issue. We as parents may never understand their problems entirely, you know, but in the same token, I feel okay with that as a parent knowing that I've created a safe and loving environment at home so they can come to me and even if they didn't still didn't want to come home and talk to me about it there are resources out there for them um, I want my child to just make choices for themselves and know what's right and wrong and to be able to live life to make themselves happy because at the end of the day that's what we're all living for is to make ourselves happy and we all close our eyes at the end of the day alone we don't close someone else's eyes. No one closes our eyes. We close our own eyes. We die alone. All right. And um, you have to look back on your life and say, I did everything I could to make myself happy. And that is my opinion on transgender parents raising transgender children. It, you know, it's all about keeping it neutral, letting them make their informed choices because children are intelligent children are very intelligent they'll know what's right and wrong for them we may not understand it at the time we may have fears but there are even resources for us you know seeing a family counselor is not a bad thing because sometimes you know discussing things with your within your own home isn't always a good thing but having the resource to go out there and have an outsider listen to everyone's opinion and then help make a great opinion for all of us is something that is you know good for any family not just on transgender issues but any issue um but yeah that is it that's it for this thursday my name is tasia if you want more information about me or you want to get in contact with me my page is xo question mark ox if you have a topic that you want us to discuss or a question that you want answered send your email to transyouthchannel at gmail.com where someone from our group will be able to check in and answer your questions possibly in a upcoming video we need those questions to keep this channel alive so definitely definitely keep sending us your questions um the next time you will see me i will have a completely different weave in this one's coming out and i got a new one coming in so excited be excited and until next time love and respect yourself Mwah.